Okay, in this video, we, we go over our last prescriptive analytics technique. Uh, it's fairly advanced, uh, but it's called DEA, or Data Envelopment Analysis. And it can get really complicated, but let me, let, let, I'll try to keep it at a real simple level. What DEA does, it's, it's used to benchmark entities in a group. So it is, it is almost always thought of as a benchmarking tool. And what you do is that you take these, these DMU, DM, DMUs, uh, these decision-making units, and you have a series of the, them, and you're trying to, to figure out of those which ones are the most efficient. So think about uh, where I've seen it used is think about uh, high schools. So if I looked at a series of high schools, they all uh, graduate high school seniors, and they've got a certain size, and they've got a certain budget, and they've got a certain faculty makeup, and they got they got different things, and we want to know which of these high schools are the most efficient. And what I mean by efficient, are they doing more with less than any other school. So certainly if you're a big school and you have huge resources, you, you should be able to produce a, a lot of successful graduates. But is there another school out there that given their size is, is doing things more than what that big school is with what they've got? So what DEA allows you to do is to determine what are the efficient DMUs. And the technique that we use is is linear programming. That's really all it is, and, and I'm going to show you a formulation that will always work, and you can, you can take this and apply this to any other problem. And in fact, I'm only looking at a three, uh, a collection of three DMUs, but where I've used this in practice, again, when I, I, I worked with the, with the high school principal, and we looked at every high school in Tennessee, so we were looking at hundreds of schools. So the technique works uh, regardless of the size of the number of entities. So you can read about it. You can, you can uh, if you want to read more about it, certainly you can. Uh, but let me open up Excel and look at an example. So let's talk through this example. We only got three entities, three hospitals. And for every one of these, we have to decide what are, are going to inputs be and what are our outputs going to be? And the assumption is that these are resources uh, that they have access to. So you can see Hospital 3 is a bigger hospital. It has more beds, um, but Hospital 2 has more labor resources. So, and these don't have to be the same units of measure. It's like, uh, it's like regression. This can be measured in beds. This might be measured in dollars or people. It doesn't make any difference with the units of measure as long as they're the same for every one of these. So in this case, we have two inputs, the, how we measure um, the hospital. And now we're looking at the results. And what they're looking at is the number of patient days. How many people stay at the hospital? And they broke it into three different outputs. They looked at the number of patient days for uh, little kids, for most people, and then for uh, elderly people. And the thought is, is that you should be able to make these bigger, uh, that if you can make these big, given that you don't have very many resources, then uh, you're an efficient hospital. And so what we're trying to do is that we're trying to maximize some type of hospital's efficiency. So let's, um, so these are inputs. These are the decision variables. These are what the model will try to figure out. So these, if I looked at the solver, the formulation of this, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to maximize a specific entity. In this case, it's hospital one. We're trying to maximize their efficiency. And we're changing these five cells. So the cells that we're changing are the input weights and the output weights. We have one set of constraints that says that our input costs have to be greater than or equal to our output. So we can't, 
we can't produce more than what our inputs are, so that's, that's just forcing that the inputs always have to be greater than or equal to that. And then also our total weights, our, our total um, input cost for the specific hospital has to be, or the one that we're interested in, has to be uh, equal to one. So there's the formulation. You're, you're going to have this file. Let's look at what happens. So these are the decision variables. These are the inputs. And they can be any unit to measures. And they can be as many. You don't want to have a whole bunch of them. But in this case, we've got two inputs and three outputs. In this case, I'm looking only at hospital one right now. I'm trying to see, is hospital one an efficient hospital? Now let's look at the formulas that go into the input cost. So for hospital one, the input cost are these weights, which these are the decision variables, multiplied by the input cost. And then for hospital one, the output values is also um, a weighted average of the weights of the outputs multiplied by the outputs. And that's that is the same, but there's for hospital two and there's for hospital three, hospital two output. And these, that's just there to show you that we need these to be greater than or equal to these. So when you use DEA, you have to set, you got to sp uh, pick a specific DMU. So in the first one, I put one there. So I type a one. And look what happens when I type two. You see that? When you type two, um, oh, sorry, we're not, you, down here is where it's tied together. Um, that should be equal to that. So if I make this equal to two, this number changed, which means the hospital input cost change, which is a, a VLOOKUP where it's looking up this value, this value in this array, and it returns the second column. So it looks up two, so it's returning 107 because it's the second hospital. See that? And then the output value for the second one is this value. So that's why it's 56. Again, it's also using a VLOOKUP, looking in this array, looks in the first column for this value two, and then returns the fourth column, one, two, three, four. So if I go back to hospital one, the 100 is this and this. And then hospital three, it returns this and this there. Now, why is this important? It's because when you use DEA, you have to run a linear programming for every DMU. So let's start with the first one. I put it at one, and I go under Data Solver. My formulation is there, and I hit Solve. It's already I've already done it, but it, we get these numbers, and the the focus is that it's trying to maximize the output of hospital one because we chose hospital one and you can see it becomes a hundred so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down right here pay special the value and there you go well now let's do hospital two I'll do hospital two so now I change the hospital two so it's gonna change these weights again to try to maximize this value of hospital two so I'm going to now go back to Solver, solve it, and I get an OK. And look at this. Look at what the, the value is. It's 77.33. Show it as a percent. So right then, I know that Hospital 2 is not an efficient hospital. It's... It's compared to hospitals one and three, it's not doing what it, as much with what it has as the other ones. These numbers are low relative to these other ones given the resources required. See, it's got the most of both of these. It's got the most hospital beds and it's got the most labor, yet it's producing less underage or young people and old people as any of them. So it's not efficient. Now let's go look at Hospital 3. Hospital 3, I go to Solver, and I hit Solve, and now I, I look at this. Its output, which is reflected there because of the VLOOKUP, it's 100%. 
and it showed that as a percent. So we can say that hospital one and hospital three are efficient, but hospital two isn't. Hospital two, relative to hospital one and three, are doing less with the same amount of resources, are doing, uh, are, are producing the same as the other ones with more resources. It's not an efficient one. So what should hospital two do? They need to go benchmark themselves against hospital one and three because hospital one and three are efficient. So when you do DEA for a large data set, and again, we only have three hospitals, but what if we had a hundred hospitals? What if we had every hospital in Texas? You, could, you will have in every hospital, you're gonna have a subset that are gonna be 100% efficient and the rest of them will not be that way. And so what that allows you to do is to go benchmark yourself against the most efficient hospitals. So you often see this in branches, like in banks. You look at all the look at a certain large bank that has branches all over the state or all over the country, and they'll use DEA to find out which of the branches are the most efficient, and then all the other branches will benchmark themselves, meet with them, and find out, hey, what are you doing? Because you're doing something better than what we are. You're using your resources better than we are. And that's the beauty of DEA is that it allows you to do a benchmarking. It doesn't say that Hospital 1 and Hospital 3 are good. It's just saying they're efficient. They're doing more with less. Okay, um, there will be a homework that's a DEA uh, for you um, to do. Thanks.